Hello there traders. Welcome to Elite Currency. My name is Chris. I'm excited about being here because we're going to be talking about fractals, the fractal indicator. Um, and in fact, we have a special indicator developed by ECS, our own indicator. But if you don't have that, don't worry. You know, all of these ideas are, are pretty much implementable with a normal fractal that you have on your MT4 or MT5. Uh, should work just as well. Uh, just small differences, I guess, uh, ultimately usable for any fractal. Uh, but we, I'll be showing the, the ECS fractal in, uh, in this webinar. All right, now it is, uh, just so I have an idea, the ECS fractal is part of the ECS SWOT uh, software, ECS SWOT methodology, just that you have an idea what we're talking about and you can find more info if you want on the website. But that's not the point. The point is to talk about the fractal indicator and how we use it, why we use it, et cetera. We already talked about the fractal indicator um in the past we had several webinars if you go to our youtube channel punch in fractal you'll see a couple of videos pop up so i wanted to you know if if you're not familiar with the basics etc this is not really the video for that there are other videos about it i really wanted to go more in, in depth rather than uh, you know talk about the basics if you're looking for the basics uh come back to this video now it's a live webinar but later on a video uh and and review first the basic video then come back to this one all right, so uh, I want to talk about why I think fractal indicator is, is such an important part of analyzing the charts and understanding the market structure. Now, before uh, we do that, sorry, this is incorrect. Uh, before we do that, I want to give you a quick introduction about our Fib and Wave Guide. It's a free of charge. You know, it's just freely accessible for everyone. Uh, it's just something we wanted to share uh, to make. Fib and wave trading easier for everyone. So it's just our part of helping the community community. So if you're interested, the link is here. I'll add the link in the YouTube later on uh, so you can access that. And for those that are live in the webinar, uh, let me uh, hang on. Let me add that link. Hang on. Let me add the link right now. Sorry about that. It just takes two seconds. But uh, for those that are watching the uh, the, the recording, you'll have that link down below in the, in the comment section. All right. Now, moving on. Here we go. Uh, I just wanted to give you a quick intro of that. It's a, it's a comprehensive guide showing you all the relationships of fibs and waves. So it's a very good guide as a kind of general, um, no, not, I, I want to say it's like, it's a it's a good reference point for uh, for yourself so that you can go there multiple times check it out what was which wave what do you expect for that wave what kind of fib do you expect for that wave etc so it's like a it's like a dictionary in a way right for fibs and waves <laughs> you can always find the ratios and the waves you're looking for now um uh, it's a it's a guide not a video though um Although we do have a whole video series on Fibonacci, actually, which you can find on our YouTube channel. So fractals, very simply said, are support and resistance points, right? And you can see the ECS fractals at work here. And just to give you a, a general idea with regard to uh, fractals, they indicate kind of consolidation zones here because if there's momentum, you will not see a fractal because candles are moving into one direction, right? But when price is making a consolidation like this, you will see fractals indicating support or resistance. You will see kind of consolidation patterns and eventually there'll be a breakout, of course, and then you'll see a new momentum take place. So the ECS fractal has a little bit of a heads up because it gives you a trend direction because the shape, the diamond shape, and the color, the green for up and red for down, indicate the trend. So that's one of the benefits with ECS, ECS fractal. This is kind of the general idea of fractal, support and resistance, and you see breakouts, and you can see stopping spots, and you can maybe even see reversals from these levels, right? Now, if we add moving averages to the picture, to the mix, we can do a lot more in-depth analysis in fact because the relationship of the fractals versus the moving averages provides or enables us to analyze the charts in a much deeper way 
And this is really one of, I would say, one of the great things about ECS SWOT uh, theory and ECS SWOT methods is how we use the fractal in relationship to the moving averages. Because each fractal and its position versus the moving averages will, will give us a nugget of information that is very useful. Uh, just to give you an example, for instance, we have here support fractals, red diamonds, right? Way below the 21 EMA. So this is indicating a strong downtrend, but also the resistance fractals that are either at the bottom part of the 21 EMA zone or even not even hitting the 21 EMA zone. So that indicates a lot of strength, that indicates a lot of momentum. And that's one of the ways you can measure that. Uh, in fact, you can, of course, measure it by looking at the candles that stay below the 21 EMA, but also the fractal resistance that stays at or below the 21 EMA and the fractal support that is very far from the 21 EMA. All of that is confirming uh, what you see here, which is momentum. So that is one of the key crucial things that as far as I'm aware, I did not discuss in any other webinar. Maybe I did. I have talked a lot in the last few years, so I'm not 100% sure, but I, I, it doesn't ring a bell. Uh, so this is a new thing that I, I'm uh, discussing here, as far as I know, and it's really a crucial part of understanding the importance of fractals, but also moving averages, this combination. So let's talk about this uh, a bit more in detail, because this is the core of today's webinar. So ECS fractals that are away from moving averages, ECS fractals that are bouncing at the moving averages, ECS fractals that are in the moving averages, and ECS fractals on different time frames. This is what we'll be discussing in this webinar. I'm going to use live charts because I like to use uh, the flexibility of looking at current charts rather than using screenshots. So let's move there. I just need to close this. And I'll add this. All right. Now fractal, uh, fractal indicator can be used on all time frames. It's fractal. The, the very essence of fractal is that it's fractal, right? And fractal means that our patterns that are repetitive on all scales, all, all time scales, right? So uh, when looking at, for instance, this is the euro dollar. So let's take a look at a higher time frame, uh, such as uh, the weekly chart, all right? And let's go back to a spot where there was clear momentum uh, on this weekly chart, which was here with this big fall uh, on the euro dollar about four years ago. Now, just to show you that it, not only now, it's this is a timeless concept, right? So when you have fr uh, fractals here, right, below the 21 EMA, of course, one of the key things with uh, momentum is that you have candles below the 21 EMA. That is something you already have here. HMA is down. But if you look at the fractals in relationship to the 21 EMA, uh, you have here, for instance, clearly indicating downtrend. This is a weekly time frame, so it's a bit slow. It will show you these fractals at a later spot. If you look at daily chart, you will see that earlier. So that it's not, I don't want to say that the weekly chart is the only time frame here. But when you get fractals on the opposite side here, you have red diamonds and you have fractals on the opposite side that are not even in the 21 EMA. And of course, those fractals are confirmed when you have two candles closed to the right, so after this candle, after this candle, after this candle. Then that indicates that there's a lot of power to the downside. The trend is by far not finished and more continuation is likely. And that's what we saw right here and we saw that continuation. All right. Now, uh, when you have fractals like this, hitting the 21 EMA and you see uh, price kind of stopping there, that is indicating a resistance spot as well. And that's indicating a likely bouncing spot. Now that happened, but we still got a further consolidation because the pattern expanded. But here, for instance, right, we got a fractal that was above the 21 in UMA, indicating, uh, although it's orange, indicating that actually the strength is to the upside. That happens in reversals because when price moves in one direction for a while, of course, the chances of a reversal do 
uh, occur. So even though there could be um, basically uh, there could be diamonds to the, indicating a downtrend still, if the trend has gone far enough, then uh, it doesn't mean that the downtrend will continue or the uptrend, right? There is a point where the reversal will take place. And that's why we use WIZ. We use WIZ for that because that indicates how far price has moved away from the moving averages. So the trend is not something that will last forever. And the fractal indicate, indi indicates a trend, but there's always cautiousness needed for a reversal. In this case, we see that there are still red fractals available, but price breaks above the 21 EMA rather than breaks below it. So that's a moment where a bigger reversal could take place. And when we get a fractal, although it's orange uh, and therefore still leaning towards the bearishness, but the fractal is not even in the 21 EMA. That is indicating actually bullishness. That support fractal is way above the 21 EMA. Right? Here you can see the fractal is at the 21 EMA, at the 21 EMA. So that's actually a bullish signal. And uh, you can see indeed price nicely moving away from it. Hooks back to the 21 EMA, and we see fractals at the 21 EMA. So that's indicating, again, a bullish bounce. Here we see a fractal, uh, a resistance fractal, but that's far away from the 21 EMA. Again, showing bullishness. And as price breaks above it, we see a continuation to the upside. Now, compare that particular impulsive piece to, for instance, uh, here, right? Where price is clearly, these fractals are clearly uh, below the 21 EMA, indicating a resistance. I'll show you a better example in the daily chart. But for now, momentum can occur to both directions. Even if the trend is down, momentum could occur uh, to both directions, depending on if there's a reversal or trend continuation. And the fractal relationship uh, will, versus the moving averages, will indicate where that momentum could take place, right? Depending on how the relationship is of both support and resistance towards the 21 EMA. The shape and the color of the fractal will indicate whether a downtrend is maybe a bit more likely, right? In this case, we had a downtrend continuation. Here we had it, here we had it, here we had it, but here we didn't have it. And that's up to the trader to decide, uh, you know, when that occurs. I have someone asking, where's the video? Uh, as far as I can see, the video is visible. OK, great. All right, so that so the, the shape and the color are important, but it's not everything, right? Of course, it, there is an edge for that trend, but it doesn't mean that the trend will not reverse. And these fractals will not necessarily guide us for reversals, all right, uh, when you look at the shape and colors. Now, compare that. Let's dive into a lower time trend. Let's compare that. For, for reversals, we need other things. We need divergence, support of resistance levels. We could find support of resistance levels of a higher time frame using fractals, for instance, right? We could, or fibs, right? Um, and we could use the relationship of price and fractals on lower time frame to understand whether a trend reversal or continuation is likely. Now let's take a look at this daily chart. Again, let's analyze these fractals in relationship to uh, the moving averages. You see here in the recent piece, uh, a bearish fall of uh, earlier this year on the euro dollar, right? Where price broke below the 21 EMA with momentum. And you see these fractals here below the 20, both of them well below the 21 EMA. Then we see one fractals where they basically bounce off the 21 EMA. And then we see a further consolidation. These fractals, however, remain roughly at the 21 EMA, right? and these fractals too. So when price breaks below those fractals, uh, we see breakout and continuation. We see this fractal further away from the 21 EMA. We say this, this fractal, this resistance fractal, further deeper in the 21 EMA, and indeed the continuation as price basically breaks, pullbacks, and continues. 
to the downside. So what this info was giving us was that the fractals, you know, it's not a, it was not as impulsive as this part, but basically the fractals here were indicating that it, it not able to break above the 21 EMA. It's still holding. The fractals are right at the top. It isn't able to break below it either for the moment, but if it does, it would definitely be with the trend and it would definitely be a breakout because we have diamonds, red diamonds here. And uh, those diamonds, of course, were not that far away from the 21 EMA here, but it's a consolidation, so that's not so strange. Here too, they were clearly very close to the 21 EMA. All of that is, is still uh, indicating a sideways move and a corrective pattern and a breakout to the downside would fit the bill. So let's take a look at the four hour chart and let me show you some examples here. Uh, for instance, we had a break fractals below the 21 EMA. So when you see that typically, in this case, not, not a good example, but when you see resistance fractals in a downtrend below the 21 EMA, it's typically good to zoom in to lower time frames because there's momentum and there's often a continuation. Whereas if you see fractals just above the 21 EMA, that's indicating some kind of correction, a bigger correction, but still a correction, a pullback within the trend. So in this case, likely, uh, especially if the trend just started. Now, there is always a point where you might get that bigger reversal, right? Whereas right here, for instance. So when you get fractals right at the 21 EMA, a confirmation is when price breaks below the support fractals like it did here. And you get a continuation. Here, we didn't get the break below the 21 EMA or the HMA turn. Here, the HMA flicked back down. Here, it didn't. Here, the HMA stayed up. All right. So although we had a resistance fractal right at the 21 EMA, this support fractal didn't break and the HMA stayed up. And we had a bigger reversal rather than a trend continuation here. So that's when you get fractals, resistance fractals right at the 21 EMA, it could either be part of a bigger reversal or it could be a pullback within the trend. So the HMA, uh, the break below the fractal are measure whether you get the reversal or you get the trend continuation. Um, so here we got the reversal, right? Here we have a fractal, support fractal in the 21 EMA. That's already indicating already a bullish bounce. Here we have a fractal above it. So that's already indicating momentum to the upside. A reversal, but momentum to the upside. Here we have 21 EMA clearly in the, in the, sorry, fractal in the 21 EMA. We have resistance fractals way far away from the 21 EMA. Again, trend continuation. Let me show you, however, example of a reversal where the fractals will help us indicate that. Let's take a look at this one hour chart and then I'll look at your questions I see there. Let's take a look at this one hour chart. So here we see uh, support fractals. Uh, indicating downtrend still, red diamonds, right? But those fractals are in the 21 EMA, so they don't mean much. We like fractals that are below it, preferably further away from the 21 EMA. And we see resistance fractals actually far away from the 21 EMA to the upside. So although the trend is down, price action, the fractals relationship to the 21 EMA is warning us of a trend reversal already, even though the diamond red would indicate downtrend. Other information is countering that. Okay. So uh, we see indeed uh, a bounce at the 21 EMA again, and we see price break above it like this. This is where price gets extra steam. We see a retest. We see a green fractal for the first time, and we see a clear uh, fractal um, and a rebreak above it. All of this basically here, specifically this part indicating a potential reversal. At this point, we get a bull flag, clearly fractals way above the 21 EMA, support fractals at the 21 EMA, and we get a continuation indeed. Then we get a spot where um, price is actually breaks below the 21 EMA. And we get support fractals that are this time below the 21 EMA rather than at the 21 EMA. Do you see the difference? Plus we get resistance fractals that are just above the 21 EMA rather than way above it. Do you see that the shift here, the shift with resistance fractals far away from the 21 EMA, support at the 21 EMA here, support fractals actually below the 21 EMA rather than at, and resistance fractals at the 21 EMA. So the entire kind of structure has shifted, right? To, for price to be 
price is now more, you know, at a spot where it's it's an uptrend still probably. Look at the moving average at least, but it, it's facing local resistance. So at this spot, we're either facing a spot where a moment where it's a pullback within the trend, uh, a bigger pullback because these are lighter pullbacks, lighter corrections. This is a bigger pullback or a reversal. At this spot, you got to be careful for an ABC correction like this. And often the second break, which happened here, is better. So we did get indeed a bigger correction. Uh, you got a fractal here that is, well, marginally a little bit better maybe than these because it's the second break above it. This fractal, of course, indicates uh, the uptrend even more because it's way, for, from, way further from the 21 EMA. This support fractal is already above the 21 EMA. This fractal is already in it, which is better than below it. So here, this, this, this fractal is already the first moment where we can say an uptrend might start. This is the confirm These two fractals are the confirmation of that trend. And there we go. We get the upside. We get another bounce, another bounce, right? And eventually, of course, the trend ends, which happened here. We get a break below it. So again, be careful because support fractals are uh, below it. Resistance fractals are just above it. And indeed, we get a bigger uh, correction. Break below it, hook back, and uh, bounce off the 21 EMA. And a continuation lower, as you can see. All right, in this case, the 21 EMA is being used as resistance. So here you can see 21 EMA used as support, 21 EMA is used as support, and the fractals, support and resistance fractals, both of them in relationship to the 21 EMA, indicate uh, whether we get a trend continuation whether it was indeed a, a pullback within the trend or not. And, and this, these were minor pullbacks. This was a major pullback, but still a pullback within the trend, not a, not a reversal or a bigger correction. And uh, here with these fractals, we know uh, that there's a chance that there's a higher chance that it will continue higher. Here, it was a risky spot because of the, the fractal relationship there. These were more pro higher probability spots for upside. Here again, risky spot for longs and indeed reversal or a larger retracement is likely this was these are like lighter pullbacks right because it's bouncing off an hourly 21 ema this is a major pullback on a one hour chart because it's almost went back to the 144 ema this has become a downtrend on the one hour chart but this is when multiple time frame analysis comes into into play because although this was still all of this is still a major pullback on the one hour chart when it breaks below the 144 EMA, it's actually becoming a downtrend that doesn't mean that on a four hour chart the trend is down the trend on the four hour chart could still be up right because a downtrend on the hourly chart could just be a major pullback on the four hour chart and that's how they're all connected so um that's something to keep in mind uh we see that for instance the major pullback on the hourly chart was a minor pullback on the four-hour chart because it bounced off the 21 EMA, right? The major pullback on the four-hour chart could be a minor pullback on the daily chart because it's back at the 21 EMA, whereas on the four-hour chart, it went back to the 144 EMA. All right, at the moment, the four-hour chart is, you know, we have a resistance fractal way below the 21 EMA, and the support fractal, we have a resistance fractal right at the 20 minute support fractal at the, uh, way below the 20 minute. So it's definitely in a bearish mode as well. But when we analyze the moving averages, they're still bullishly aligned. So if it were to, and it, we could see potential ABC pattern here. So if it does break above the 21 EMA and you get a support fractal here, right? And you get a resistance fractal here first. Let's say it moves up like this. Then you get a bounce there. Then you get a support fractal in the 21 EMA. And then you get a resistance fractal above it. And then you get a support fractal that is above the 21 EMA. Well, then we're back in uptrend. And we can look for longs uh, on this time frame or a lower time frame. So that's when you see my euro dollar, pound dollar videos, for instance. Uh, and I say, wait for the break above the 21 EMA, wait for the pullback to the 21 EMA, and wait for the bounce at the 21 EMA. Now you know maybe a bit more about what I'm talking about because uh, I'm talking about 21 EMA, of course, but also about price action, obviously, but also about fractals and their relationship to those 21 EMAs. Now let me take a look at some of these questions. 
Uh, so you can use, let's take a look at lower time frame. Indeed, it's a good one. How can you confirm, for those that are, don't see the question, can you please explain how we confirm breakouts with fractals on lower time frames? All right, so let's take a look at this 15 minute chart. So uh, here we have, this is, let's use our knowledge with fractals versus the moving averages. So here you see, for instance, um, you know, you see fractals really far away from the 2182 upside. So this is a moment where you could get a bigger correction consolidation uh, period, right? And that's what happened. Now you see fractals that are at the 21 EMA and fractals, so you get kind of a consolidation zone here. So this is already a little bit less disturbing, this, this zone right here, because it's a flat correction. Resistance fractals are at the 21 EMA, not above it like here. So when you have these resistance fractals, it's, it's a little bit more dangerous because of the volatility to the upside. Here it's already better. So here I would be more in a patient mode. I would not wait for a breakout. I would if anything, here, when you have a fractal like this above it, I would, it's still bearish probably, but I would wait for a break, pull back, and continue before trading it. It's too risky otherwise, which we didn't get. Here, because the fractals are at resistance, at the 21 made top, here you might think about just a simple break of those fractals. Fractals that are below the 21 EMA, look at that. The fractals are below, not fractals in the 21 EMA like these. That's, those are less important. But fractal below the 21 EMA could be a good breakout. So you could trade that in different ways. You could, you could theory, if you really like it, put a pending order below it. Or you could wait for a 15-minute candle or an hourly candle to close below that support line. Uh, that was a 15-minute candle, this hourly here candle. Uh, Close below that 50 minute fractal, although on the hourly, you might want to use an hourly fractal that was here. All right, so one of these two candles would confirm that. Those uh, would be confirmations of breaks this candle, this candle, or one hour candles here. That's one way you can do that. Uh, uh, if, if you rather be more careful, you could wait because now, because this is a breakout, always a little bit risky. Uh, here, you have clear uh, support fractals that are very far away from the 21 EMA. So it's likely to be a break pullback continue pattern, although you don't have any resistance fractals in here. So maybe not ideal, but pretty good. So if you are looking for a continuation, you could trade the fractal break on, on this fractal break too. Or you could trade candlestick patterns up in here, expecting the pullback and continue. Or you can trade the break of the 21 EMA, which would actually be this candle. If you're using ECS SWAT software, uh, you can use the red and blue ECS candles, or you can use the arrows here. So there are different ways, or the HMA turn. So there are many ways, you know, how to tackle that. Uh, if you specifically ask about fractals, you could use the break of these fractals for, wait for the breakout candle to close below it, or even pending orders in some cases. Um, what periods do you recommend? Periods of the moving averages? I use 21 EMA, high, low, uh, high and low. You can use the close as well, but that would just give you a line in the, in the middle. Uh, you could use 34 EMA, I like, zone. 144 EMA for long-term moving average, I like. And another question, could we use these fractals for reversals? Uh, for instance, your dollar returned from 113. Uh, let's take one second. Return from 113. Yeah, here. Okay. Uh, let's see. And your support fractal, red diamond, was 113.90. Indeed. Yes. Uh, this support fractal, of course, would not be visible. Uh, let's see. Would not be visible here. That would be confirmed on this candle. Although you might on this bullish candle, looking at candlestick patterns, you might suspect that because there was a resistance fractal that was away from the 21 EMA, you get a bullish candle at the 21 EMA. So more aggressive traders might already trade, could trade that. HMA is up, price is clearly above the 21 EMA. So, you know, the, and, and the resistance fractal is away from the 21 EMA. So those are factors that are in favor of trading along 
right at this candle. If you're waiting for support fractal though, it would be a bit slower because that support fractal is only confirmed after this candle close. All right, so it depends how you, how you trade it, how aggressive you are. If you wait for that candle, um, you know, there, it depends how you want to trade it. You, it's possible to trade um, this candle as a breakout. It's a bit more risky. Um, you could trade on lower time frames. That'd probably be a bit more prudent. Wait for this flag here, for instance, in continuation. It's also possible, right? Um, it's, it depends on the scenario. You could put a stop loss. Sometimes even below this candle low, it's riskier, but you get better R2R or below the fractal, which is more conservative. Um, if, but yeah, it is possible to, to trade you know, the, this candle close. It's a bit later, but that's when this support fractal would be confirmed. You could trade it earlier based on other factors, based on the resistance fractals and other things, uh, also possible. Uh, let's see. If you hold on to... Now, the target, of course, I was talking about 117.50, 117.75, and price missed that zone by about 17 pips. So if you did enter here and you did try to hold on to that, you would have missed it by a little bit. But I think that using these fractals at the 21 EMA would have been fair as a, as a trade trail stop loss. So you could have gotten maybe 150 uh, pips out of that. Um, if you would have exited here, for those that know my time pattern factor, uh, time factor pattern, five to six candles not breaking the high, one, two, three, four, five, six. Here there was already weakness. All right. And although the although the fractals necessarily didn't didn't show that as yet, uh, the time pattern did. And we did see, you know, that we were running into a big resistance zone. It looked like five waves up were finished. So if you add other things then you might have preferred to grab profit in here. It depends on, you know, what, what tools you use. Uh, but if you use these fractals for trail stop losses, of course, that's, I think, fair um, to, to say that those would be logical levels to use for such a decision to lock in profit there. And indeed, we get a bigger correction. Um, maybe if you're lucky enough, you had a profit to take profit that was a little bit earlier, right? So that depends. Depends where you put the TP. I would have uh, put it higher, so I would have missed it, right? Um, so one more, let's see. Prasindu is saying that he loves this SWAT system, which I'm very happy to hear about. And uh, sometimes daily HMA turned it down, but trend is just a correction. How do we identify clear trend direction? So it, it's it's it is best to use two. I would say it's good to use two time frames. Uh, that helps, I think, understand if you're trading discretionary to understand what's going on. It's you can use candles in relationship to the 2020 May, and you can use fractals in relationship to the 2020 May. So sometimes you have a clear trend and clear momentum, both aligned to the same direction. Here, right, the trend is down and momentum is down too. Here, trend is down, but momentum is up. So sometimes you will have ideal trends. Sometimes you won't. And that's something that's just part of trading, part of but nothing is perfect in a way. And, and that's why we have to be kind of try to gauge that. The, and but you can use the fractal. You can use the shape and the color of the fractals for a simple trend identification, right? The ECS fractals, at least, you can do that. This is downtrend. The daily fractals are support fractals are indicating that. Then you can use the relationship of the fractals and the, and the candles towards the 21 EMA to understand whether we have indeed momentum or whether we have correction, right? Here we have momentum, here we have correction. If we have correction, then you're looking for a breakout. If you have momentum, you're looking for a continuation. If you have momentum and you're looking for a continuation, you want to zoom in. If you have, if you're looking for a breakout, you could use this time frame and look for a clear, a clear candle 
break below the fractal, or you can do that on this time frame, a lower time frame, or a higher time frame. So if you have uh, fractals like this, look for continuation on lower time frames. If you have fractals like this, probably look for a breakout or for a reversal. It depends on the breakout direction. If it breaks below the 20 EMA in the downtrend, it's a trend continuation. If it breaks above the 21 EMA, it's a reversal. So the shape and the color of the fractals will indicate trend. The candle and fractal relationship to the 21 EMA will indicate uh, momentum, consolidation, and the breakout direction. And whether that breakout direction is with the trend or against the trend. So if you get a breakout, I hope that helps. If you get a break, if you get a break above this resistance trend line, right? You'll see pull price despite the downtrend. You'll see price pull away from the twenty-one EMA. And on a lower time frame, this is the daily chart. On lower time frame, you will see already patterns of fractals versus the twenty-one EMA indicating that upside. And then, of course, it's up, we have to kind of assess as a trader how far this could go up based on the overall structure. Is this perhaps it's just a simple? Three wave correction like this, and then it maybe doesn't have that much space and it could slam into resistance around here. Or maybe it's a bigger reversal and it will still continue further than that. So that's something we need to decide on a case by case basis. But this part here, right, would indicate that uh, on the lower time frame, you will have that push up and you'll see that push away from the 21 EMA on, on the daily chart. Now, if this is just a simple three wave correction, then it will slam into resistance. When would it be interesting to trade back to the downside? When you get fractals, again, that are below the 21 EMA. So you need to see downside. You need to see price move back below the 21 EMA, back into the 21 EMA. And you want to see those fractals at or below the 20 EMA before you would want to trade it back to the downside. Otherwise, it's still risky. So. Another one more question. When does blue red arrows appear? Uh, they appear with, they're based on moving averages and they indicate momentum shifts. And they're kind of like scaling options sometimes. And uh, they're a discretionary way of finding entries. Uh, it's not a rules based way. So it is not, these arrows do not indicate uh, setups. Every time, single, every single time, right? So they're for our discretion to use. If we have already analyzed the chart and we like a particular situation, we could use those arrows as a potential kind of idea uh, to trade, indeed. But not as a standalone thing. Um, can your dollar turn from one fifteen thirty? But blue arrow did not appear. I traded with ECS came back D setup via the ECS live channel. Let's see which time frame though. Uh, let's take a look. Yes, not even nothing appeared even not even on the hourly chart indeed. Only the 30 and 50 minute chart have them. Depends on the time frame you're looking at. Now, of course, if you're using uh, candlestick patterns, then you may have traded this candle, which is what Bennett indeed did uh, today via ECS Live. Uh, that's what he traded at least, and that's what he mentioned in ECS Live indeed. And the trade is going well. And uh, but arrows, what arrows? No, uh, only on the fifteen and thirty minute chart. So it depends. But the arrow, our SWAT arrow, wasn't on the one hour chart. Indeed, only on on lower time frames, fifteen and thirty. Even on a 50 minute chart, you could still the same concepts are, are basically, you know, usable. Maybe, I don't know, let's maybe we can take a look at a different uh, pair just to show you a lower time frame. If you have any other questions, let me know. I, I, but basically, the core message is the relationship of fractals towards the 21 rate. Look at both support and resistance and understand their relationship to each other. That will give you that extra kind of information about correction and 
and, and breakout and trend and momentum. Now, let's take a look at 50 minute chart here uh, this week. So, all right, here there's the opening of the week. So yeah, you see resistance fractals below at the 21 EMA, uh, support fractals below it. So when you're gonna break out here, right? Uh, that, that is looking pretty good, right? From this perspective, trend is down. We have, because at least on this 50 minute chart, right? We have red diamond fractals, but we also have the relationship with the fractals versus 2020 is confirming that. So this is a good breakout. It looks like a good breakout. we got a mini flag, a bear flag on the five minute chart and a continuation lower. Uh, you get a continuation here. These fractals stay below the 21 EMA. And you do get a continuation, but mind you, this is a 50 minute chart. So when you have fractals below the 21 EMA here, he, you know, you do get a, some continuation here, but it's not too much, as you can see. Um, 15, 20 pips. On a higher time frame, that could be more, of course, more in pips, maybe not in relationship wise or in, uh, yeah, in, in ratio wise. All right, but this is a solid signal of a downtrend. But we do first get a consolidation. You have resistance fractals. Uh, you get a bit of continuation, but then you get a bounce, and you get a bounce that your price goes into the 20 May this time around as well. Actually, here it also went to 20 May. We have multiple resistance fractals that stay at or just above it. So that's weak. That's weakness. You have, uh, let me zoom in a little bit. You have support fractals here that stay below it. Resistance fractals that stay at it. So looking like a good breakout uh, and continuation, really. And that's what it does. It takes a little bit of time. But looking at the fractals, there's nothing really that endangers the continuation lower. Support fractals clearly away from the 21 EMA. All right. And that's what it did. Now, look at this. This is the first time where resistance fractals really poke through it strongly. So that's already a first signal that you know we might be running into some danger here, uh, and that's where I would be a bit more cautious. You already have, of course, an extended downtrend. You already had a, a pretty big push to the downside, uh, so that's something to be aware of. Uh, you do get one more lower low, and then you get some volatile reaction to here after that lower low. So you want to be on guard here. Um, Price is now breaking above it. So it looks like a, a, a reversal on this time frame is taking place. And on a five minute chart, uh, you'll probably get clearly support and resistance fractals above probably 21 EMA. So overall, uh, the trend is, is, is still down, but we're getting a bigger retracement uh, that is now challenging the top of the 21 EMA on of the one hour chart in fact so we're going to have to see how far this pushes that will indicate where the resistance fractal start stops if it's far away from the 21 ema that would indicate right that uh a potential bigger bounce to the upside is likely if it bounces anywhere here then this could all be still a consolidation for more downside but be aware that there will probably be a bigger consolidation zone because on the 15 and five minute chart Price has moved away from the 21 EMA. So what will happen is that if it does stop here, you'll see downside, you'll see about at the 21 EMA support, then you'll see price break below it, and you'll probably see a, a, a pullback back to it. Then on the hourly chart, it'll start to get ready for a downside continuation. If, however, price manages to bounce at the 21 EMA, rather on this five minute chart, then you might see a bigger correction here to take place on the hourly chart. And you might see the first legs of a bigger uh, correction on this time frame. In that case, the resistant fractal, you will see a support fractal. Uh, you'll see a support fractal somewhere in the 21 EMA perhaps, right? Let's say that it goes up here makes a downside correction but price bounces around here right you'll see support fractal around here that 
also would indicate the bigger kind of correction or reversal uh, to the upside. Uh, let's see, one more comment, and then I guess we'll wrap it up for today. I know that um, this could be a bit tricky, and in now it might seem it, it could be even more difficult when applying it on, on your own. Just keep in mind that BCS fractals, or any fractals for that matter, uh, ECS fractals have the advantage that you'll see the trend because of the shape and the color. But just keep in mind that both the support of resistance fractals in, the, in relationship to the 21 EMA plus the candles will help you gauge breakouts, corrections, and momentum. That's basically the, the main core idea. Um, let's see. Yeah, last question, I guess. E you, your dollar bouncing at 50 fib. This four hour candle create bullish pin bar. Is that a show of trend? Yes, we were talking about in my uh, euro dollar pound dollar video of the day. Today, 4th of September, the price is likely to bounce around 115. It bounced 115.25 down to 114.75. It hit 115.30, which is uh, close enough. Although it missed a fib by a few pips, but I think it's close enough. So I do think there's a good chance that this bullish price action, if it stays like this, is, is likely to be a first signal of an upside and a bigger wave seat to come to the upside. I think there's a decent chance. Although it missed the 50 fib by a few pips, I think it is pretty likely. And um, and uh, but probably the best would be to at this moment, if if you didn't trade this setup like Nana did, then it probably would be better to maybe even wait for to see how price re reacts to this 21 EMA. Because what we'd like to see is a break below it and a clear resistance fracture away from it. And then we would like to see price move back into the 21 EMA and use it as support. That's what I would like to see. You would have a, a clear kind of, well, not a clear, maybe, but a little bit of a, uh, a left shoulder, a little bit of a head, and maybe a right shoulder, right, to add to that. That's what I would like to see. So this is not a good moment because it's testing that 21 EMA resistance zone. But if it breaks above it, pulls back, and then continues, that, then it would look better to me. Um, I mean, if you like this four-hour candle, it could be worth trading as is. Uh, if it doesn't break here, it, it might, though, make a retracement first, like this. Uh, and, it, you know, the bigger reversal could still take place. Just because it doesn't break here doesn't mean it will necessarily fail. Um, all right, but maybe, yeah, four-hour candle is an option, I'm not saying. Uh, I would maybe just rather wait for it to see how price responds. If it breaks, it becomes more clear. If it bounces, then I would be inclined to wait for how it reacts to about this support zone and see if we get a bounce there. And that could be a retracement of that four hour candle. All right, folks. So I hope uh, that helped uh, and that makes. Uh, the fractal more valuable for you. That's what was my main mission uh, for today. And I really uh, enjoy talking about fractals. So for me, it was a lot of fun. And um, I hope uh, I hope that uh, it made you also more excited about fractals in general and the ECS fractal in, in specific. Uh, one more thing, though, before we push off, I guess. Uh, a few days ago, once last thing though, let's see. A few days ago, you mentioned inverted head and shoulders, your dollar daily. Let's see, daily chart. Yes, indeed, correct. That's why that one fifteen was support, and it looks like it's bouncing off that level, isn't it, or close to it, indeed. And uh, could go to one twenty, uh, maybe even one twenty seventy. I think I that probably was based on this fib. Yes, indeed, that was based on that fib, indeed. Yes, indeed. It's, uh, it, I think it's a, a decent chance that this is a bouncing spot, indeed. And um, from this point of view, you know, when, I, when I'm discussing here about bounce or break, 
is really going very much into details. So it depends how aggressive you are as a trader. Like, uh, it, you know, if you are very patient and very into finding the perfect level, you know, then you might wait. If you if you just generally look at the daily chart and generally look at four hour candle, uh, that is enough, I think. Looking at the potential R2R, looking at the probability of a bounce here, there are, I think, plenty of valid reasons just to trade it as it is and not nitpick about an exact entry and just trade where you think there's a decent entry and just take that wherever you think that is. In this zone, roughly, there's, there is that decent chance of a bounce. You know, and whether it's 115.77 or if it's 115.50 or if it's what, you know, it, you're talking, generally speaking, about details here. So I think generally any long ideas here is, 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 is valid, is interesting. And if it's a loss, it's a loss. Not, the market is not is, is how it is. We can't predict it. But pretty, pretty decent zone from R to R, from a support and pattern point of view and probability point of view, I think a decent kind of area. And how and where, it depends on uh how precise you are and i tend to be overly precise sometimes sometimes i'm that's my flaw a little bit because i i'm nitpicking about an entry and then sometimes i miss it because i i'm waiting for this or that and then i miss it so that's my sometimes a little bit of my weakness because i am overly precise with this <laughs> and i i expect a certain path and it, and it doesn't do that and then the general direction i was all right but then i just missed the trade sometimes um when will we discuss falcon i i have a video falcon by the way sorry is a subsystem rules-based subsystem of ecs swat for those that don't know this is internal lingo for the moment uh, but uh, it is up in the swat forum and we have a video and we have written rules there in, in the swat forum swat educational forum uh for those ecs live members uh you have to be note that we will send the, 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 the setups through ECS Live, uh, but these rules-based systems are, are will only be traded, will only be traded by ourselves through ECS Live, but the rules are only visible in ECS SWAT. Right. The discretionary part is all available through ECS Live as well. The course and the indicators if you have a three month package, six, or if you have two, two months, if you have ordered two months of one month, sorry. <laughs> All right. Um, let me head back to, and then we'll wrap it up to this. So yeah, the last thing, Fib and Wave Guide, go ahead here um, and check it out. Gives you all the relationships there. Last thing, if you want to join the ECS Traders Club program, that too is for free. Both things are for free here. That's it for today. Uh, wish you all good trading. Enjoy trading or, or analyzing fractals and see you all very soon. Cheers.